Hello and welcome to another Age of Empires IV Civilization Showcase. This week we're taking a look at the French and the Chinese. I'm Zach Robinson, you may also know me as Zero Empires, and joining me today... Eric Robel, we are on the balance team and we've got a very exciting match between the French and the Chinese. Yeah, I'm looking forward to this. Um, the map today is Mongolian Heights, and we've seen a couple of maps so far. We've seen Arabia, we've seen Mountain Pass. This map is the first map to feature a little bit of water. We've got a river running through the middle of the map here, um, and there's three crossing points, the shallows uh, along the way, which uh, may be contested, we will see. Um, worth noting, you can wall across these. And um, yeah, looking forward to this game, seeing what we have in store. Let's take a look at the Chinese here. Um, the red player, Mike, he's going to be playing as the Chinese over to the right side of the map. Give us a bit um, of information about the Chinese. So, quick overview. The main themes of the Civ are gunpowder and defensive construction. So all of their buildings build faster than any other civilization. So you can see this lumber mill, look at the progress bar look just him going. shooting Woo. up there, right? <laughs> it's a hard worker. So all their buildings are double production speed. So they can really crank out the buildings. And then the, the other thing about the, the building, though, is um, for, for balance purposes, we sort of basically have made that bonus apply less for keeps because we found that you could just run up to the enemy's base and drop a keep at double speed. And it was, there's just like, you couldn't do anything. You're just, yeah. just a keep in your base now, right? No more doubt castles. Yeah. Um, so and, and another thing you'll see right here is he's just built the Imperial Official. So this is an option from the very beginning of the game at your town center. You can choose if you want to build villagers or if you want to build the Imperial Official. Um, so it is, you know, uh, a, an opportunity cost because you have one less villager. But he's very powerful, and he is definitely worth it. So you've seen he's already out here on the field, and the supervised ability is quite interesting. So not only does he make the building produce much, much faster, uh, they also get more resources for anything that gets dropped off. So this is really cool on the mill here because all of these workers are getting extra food dropped off at the mill, and also any tech that you research at the mill, like some really cool early economic stuff. You see, Wheel he's already ar done. Yeah, already did it. Finished it, yeah. completed it. Yeah, all set, <laughs> good to go. Yeah, and they're dropping off 18 food per trip now. So, you know, they're more efficient as a result uh, and they're getting extra food on top. And whoa, Mike, coming back with uh, a large shipment of sheep <laughs> to deposit at this mill. Um, on the other side of the map, down to the uh, southwest, we have Frank. He's playing in the blue and he's playing as the French. He also has a lot a of sheep. A lot of sheep. Um, early game heights, focus, right? yeah, of course. Um, now, the French are a really strong cavalry civilization. That's the th main theme. Um, if you're familiar with the Franks in Age 2 or the French in Age 3, it's a theme that runs strong throughout mm -hmm, the franchise. Mm -hmm. No different here. They are one of two civilizations that can build knights in the feudal age, but the French get the special royal knight, and uh, that has a bonus damage after completing a charge, and it has some special unique upgrades which can apply to it later on in the game. The French are also very versatile economically, mm -hmm. um, especially in the early game. Their town centers work faster. They train villagers in just 18 seconds, so they're always getting ahead with that early eco. Wow. Oh, so <laughs> many sheep. <laughs> He's got so many sheep. That's awesome. Um, but also, on top of that, uh, their eco-techs are cheaper as well, and... Um, Later in the game, once they build keeps, they're able to position their unit uh, buildings around the keeps to get cheaper production. So economically, the French always uh, getting ahead, uh, whether or not they mean to, uh, they sort of have these advantages <laughs> yeah, that yeah. really help them throughout the game. Um, but in the middle of the map, I'm seeing whoa, some crazy whoa. stuff already, Eric. <laughs> We've got the Barbican of the Sun <laughs> being dropped in the middle here. And the Which... villager pull. <laughs> Which, so yeah, there's a couple of reasons. Uh, as, the, as the Chinese, you're building things faster. So that's part of the reason he thinks he can, <laughs> there's a battle against the sheep. the sheep. Run, sheep, run! <laughs> <laughs> and he got it up, he got it up. So the Barbican is a great building to get here because it's, it's basically like a mega outpost, yeah. right? So it's got a, a nice large area. It's able to shoot like a pretty powerful cannon at anything in the area. And we were looking earlier at this map, there's only three crossings, right? So 
having having this in the yeah. center of the map is a yeah. really focal control point. And it makes it a lot easier for you to attack the enemy. And if they want to hit you, you have a very yeah. nice, powerful defensive structure there. Yeah, the center of the map here, like the most uh, easy path to get to your enemy. He's got this here, and it's marked as a defensive landmark. But I've seen this used plenty <laughs> offensively as well, uh, which is really fun. Um, I like that Frank was trying to contest that, but he did have to go back. As you said, the Chinese faster construction really helps. It helps with aging up to the next age as mm -hmm, well. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, one thing here about the Chinese that is unique, of course, is that they can build both landmarks. Yeah, That's a yeah. really key difference. But let's talk about that later because Frank has just reached the feudal age as well. Um, he's gone up with the School of Cavalry. This is his landmark, which allows all of his stables to produce 20% faster, which is... Woo synergizes great with the fact that he can train the royal knight yeah um, it's the, already faster immediately right yeah absolutely and the and scaling throughout the game is really nice too because all your stables the whole game yeah it's right? like it's permanent right yeah. yeah that's awesome even if the landmark well actually if the landmark is destroyed it shouldn't apply but yeah 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 um you the, can repair it though that's, of course so, yeah landmarks are forever <laughs> <laughs> just like diamonds <laughs> Uh, Royal Knight's coming out here, and uh, you may have noticed he also has Chivalry, which is one of those unique techs we spoke about. Mm -hmm. This allows the Royal Knights to regen over time. So they really make for great hit-and-run units. You can run in, get the charge bonus, yeah, yeah, do yeah. the damage, the shock, and then get out, and then heal up as well. Which oh, I is, love that. Yeah, it's fantastic. Um, coming out to the top side, looks like Mike is, is walling up, so maybe we have a, a bit of an opportunity to talk about Dynasties. Yeah. So, as uh, Zach had mentioned, you can build both landmarks in all of the ages. And when you create the second landmark, you enter a dynasty. And you start in a dynasty as well. So, the early dynasty is giving you scouting bonuses. And then as you progress, the bonuses are kind of like thematic to kind of things you want to be doing later in the game. So, the second dynasty gives you villager production bonuses. You build your villagers much faster, and you also get a unique building, the village, which gives you a ton of population. 40! Yeah. 40. 40. It's four, four houses. Yeah, it's four houses in <laughs> for one. 100 wood. Yeah. <laughs> and you can build it in, in half the time, too, right? So it's yeah. only 15 seconds for that. Yeah. yeah. So not only is it just a great deal, but it also is a garrisonable building. So you can pop your guys in there to hide them. Oh, Eric, Eric, I'm going to have to cut oh, you off. I'm no, sorry. Oh, this, this is awesome. <laughs> Frank, he's built a sneaky dock right at the top of the map, a transport ship, and he's over. And, and you know, Matt, Mike's like, yeah, you know what? I, yeah, I'm safe. I'm walled. I'm, I'm, walled. I'm I've got fine. the Barbican in the middle of the map. Uh, and Frank's like, no, uh, I don't think so, buddy. Uh, <laughs> it's actually sent a villager as well. So he's dropping a stable up here. The Royal Knights are in. Um, this could be really bad for Mike. He's yeah. not expecting this. He has this. no units, right? Yeah. He, he was. Oh, oh look at that villager! Go. There goes. There it goes. <laughs> <laughs> I like his feet went flying in the yeah. air when he got charged. That was right? awesome. <laughs> uh, but you know, this is almost like um, you know he he knew that Frank's a cavalry sieve. It's almost like he's ready for cavalry anyway. Um, oh, and he's already got two that's, barracks. Yeah, very yeah. nice. Well prepared. Yeah, and oh, he scouted in the top as well. He's pulling the villagers over. Do you think he's going to torch this, or is it too risky it's that too, a knight it's too could, risky could pop with the knights, out? Certainly, yeah. certainly. So it, it looks like he's trying to retreat trying to up there. Away. And he saw. I think he saw those knights coming, <laughs> <laughs> walling the gap, and uh, uh, maybe hiding in the stealth. Who knows? Um, those, wow, this those is knights really are fun. coming. Those knights are coming. <laughs> oh, 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 build the wall. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, I guess these villagers are going to have to find some, maybe chop some wood here. I don't okay. Know. We'll, All right. We'll see, we'll they've uh, they've created a new home for themselves. <laughs> the knights, they're trying to, look, look they, they're they like, where'd those in, villagers they? go? They can't get no, in No, 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 I don't okay. think so. They're stuck out. I mean, they're, that is still eight trying... idle villagers, though. That's yeah, that huge. is that is yeah. a good... And they're... Yeah, okay, okay. So they're, they're throwing the torches. They're trying to get in, but... That many, that many cavalry is not going to get you through a wall when you have nah. eight villagers that can repair, right? They'll repair, yeah. Um, okay, this is kind of chaotic. I thought we'd have time to talk about the sieves, but apparently not. Oh, he's using the spearman to, to torch down the, the stables and trying to make a run for it with the oh, villagers. Get oh, out, get out, get out, run away! Oh, no! Oh, okay, he lost one, That's not actually too not bad. too bad. Yeah, and wow, he's really confident in the spearman here. He just went right back down yeah. to collecting resources. That is bold. More spearmen coming over. And I think this might be short-lived for Frank. Um, yep, by the yep. looks of things, he's going to get cleaned up. Spearmen are taking care of... Oh, look at him just yeah. pasting all those knights. And now now he's going to town with the torches. 
yeah. And as we said before, the, the spearmen get a huge bonus against cavalry. Um, and I think oh, all yeah. Frank can oh, do yeah. now is is maybe you know build the tower. Oh, you can put the knights in to get some extra damage. Yeah, each one gives you an arrow. This is actually working out pretty well. He's about to kill that villager, right? Yeah. One more shot. One more He's shot. He's going to get it. Oh, nice. got him. Oh, and look, the, uh, the, the chivalry <laughs> the tech is, is done. The knight is healing. <laughs> very nice. Very nice. The knight is healing in the hold, uh, but I don't think he's going to last much longer as that gets burned down here. And yeah, I think Mike responded to that very well. I think that could have gone a yeah. lot worse than it yeah. did, to be honest. I like his response. The the knight popped out of the tower, right? Yeah. And all the spearmen immediately switched targets to Straight attack on. the knight. Deal bonus damage. He got right on that knight and killed that too. Protected his villager. Oh, what a hold. Yeah, that's awesome. Now he's got a lot of spearmen. And, and I wonder if this could work to Frank's advantage, right? He knows he's invested heavily in spearmen. Now maybe Frank thinks about maybe producing the counter unit. Yeah. Um, it would be a bit futile to just send more knights into that. Oh, yeah, uh, you're, yeah, you you're not getting anything done. An archer switch, though, would be really strong now. Yeah, probably. an archer switch could be great. And uh, Frank's also try taking the time while he's got Mike on the back foot to, to wall up. Can we get back to the dynasty thing, though? Because that was cool. <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> we had, there was some really good action we had to go over. But, yeah. yeah, great hold there by Mike. And for the dynasties that he may be considering... Mm -hmm. There's a bonus that you get, a unique bonus. There's a unique building that we talked about, the village. Yep. And then you actually get a third thing as well, which is you unlock a dynasty unit. Yeah. And you can only build that unit while you're in the dynasty, but they're very powerful. So the first dynasty, the unit is the repeater crossbowman. Yeah. And he's quite good early game because he fires like a rapid fire set of arrow, uh, arrow bolts, I guess you could say. And they're low damage but there's a lot of them. So they're really good at anything that's unarmored. So archers and spearmen, which you see a lot of early on, they yeah. do quite well against. And then if the enemy has knights or man-at-arms, those are armored yeah. guys, so they mitigate a ton of the damage, so it's not very good. Yeah. So I'm not expecting in this particular matchup that we would see the repeater crossbowmen because of the access to early knights. Yeah, uh, and the, the dynasties are awesome because as you progress through the game, the dynasties get a little stronger as well. They give you that versatility. Um, that You also get to build both landmarks. So yeah. your potential yeah. like, power level is so high at the uh -huh, end. Uh -huh. um, and you know the final dynasty, Ming, which you know who knows if we'll get there this game, but Ming um, gives you all your military units more health. So it's like the, the ultimate final like, yeah, dynasty, let's yeah. go, ready to go. And the, the landmarks kind of synergize too with yeah. the whole unique units because you lose access to the units. So you could build the repeater crossbowman and then if you go to Ming, you no longer have access to that repeater, but we have a landmark in age four that unlocks all the previous dynasty units. So if you had gotten access to it before, you can go back and get it again. Um, Frank now, he's just actually reached the castle age, Whoa. and I'm surprised Mike didn't push out an attack. You know, he's got free and easy access to, to Frank's side of the map through the center, but yep, he's holding yep. off. Um, but now is a good time to attack because age three's just come in, he's invested all those resources. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, and Frank has made a uh, switch into Arbaletir. Um, excuse the pronunciation. I thought, that was, I thought that was spot on. It bad. sounded fantastic. This is another unique unit to the French. It is a crossbowman, and they have the unique Pervis ability, which gives them well said. five range well armor when deployed. Um, this is really cool, actually. And, and he actually went up with the um, the guild hall upgrade. Let's talk about that in a minute, because I think we've got a big fight Whoa, coming in. And I, can Frank hold this? Look at all those torches. That's, that's going to be so much damage. I mean, there are the Arbaletir at the back doing some good damage. I like that he's repairing it, though. Yeah, he's, he's slowing stalling. it down. And the spearmen are just getting wailed on here, right? Like... He doesn't so. have yeah. He doesn't have a real good way to deal with these crossbows, right? And they can just kind of kite him. If they go back. So, and what does killing this landmark really give Mike right now? Because he's not really too worried about cavalry. Oh anyway, no, right? no cavalry can attack me, right? Yeah, yeah. Although it is, it is part of a victory condition, you know, destroy all the landmarks yep, to win yep. the game. But realistically, does he get to destroy all three landmarks now? Not, well, he's retreating, not with, not, so maybe not. 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 Yeah, his, <laughs> his army's not big enough, because a bunch of villagers were garrisoned in the town center, so they were shooting yeah. a bunch. All these arbaletaires, <laughs> letraires, were shooting, so yeah, spearmen are just not a very effective unit against uh, ranged stuff, basically. Yeah, um, I mean, they've held the line for now. You know, these mm -hmm. units aren't particularly strong against... Um, 
like light units typically like the the crossbowman is really geared towards yeah. being good against cavalry heavy. like heavy yeah. cavalry yeah. and, and men at arms but the fact that they're ranged the fact that they have the protection of the town center is yeah. enough for yeah. now um guild hall this was his age three landmark mm -hmm. this is really cool like so man i love this landmark <laughs> I think it's really, it's yeah so it's, cool. it's really fun uh, like basically you get to select which of the four resources you want to generate. So you can generate food, wood, gold, or stone. And it passively builds up a bank inside of the building, and it's ready to collect whenever you like. So mm -hmm. the longer you leave it, however, the more resources it will accrue and the faster it yeah, will start to accrue yeah. them. So if you leave it for um, like a couple of minutes, it's going to be generating resources a lot faster than it is when you initially switch to a new resource. Because it starts off, it's only giving you like 20 at a time or yeah. something, right? So it's kind of like the, the longer you wait, the bigger the reward. Yeah. But the value of this landmark is entirely linked to actually collecting those resources. And you can see he just did it there. He collected the gold, nice. he switched it over to stone, um, um, and now he's got a little bit of a gold boost, but he's going to start generating look stone his, passively. Look at too. his gold. It really makes sense that he switched over to stone there, right? Because yeah. he has a huge amount of gold now. Man, I love that he's going for the Arbletier, though. I, I, I wonder what his, his game plan is here. Um, Mike is entirely going into <laughs> Spearman. But that said, I do see some Palace Guard at the back. This is one of the unique units for the Chinese as well. Um, the Chinese have a lot of unique units, they actually. They have a lot, Come to think yeah. Of it. They yeah. have, like, the Dynasty units, they have this, the yeah. Nesta Bees as well. They have quite a few unique units. Yeah. And the Palace... <coughs> Excuse me. The Palace Guard is quite cool because it's their their spin on the normal Man-at-Arms unit, but it's uh, it's quite a bit different in, in the same way that, like, the English Longbow has sort of, like, advantages and disadvantages. The This unit here, the Palace Guard... It is. It has less armor than a normal man at arms, so it's actually a little bit weaker in that case. But it makes up for it in movement speed. Yeah. These guys truck. They are <laughs> fast. So fast. Yeah. yeah. And you feel that immediately when you're using this. It's like, oh, I've got the tankiness of a man at arms, but I'm like that much faster as well. Oh yeah, great raiding unit. It can position very quickly. Yeah, yeah it's really fun to use. Oh, and speaking of nest of bees, <gasps> Mike actually went to the castle age here with the astronomical clock tower. This creates the unique clock tower variants of the core siege units. Um, well, core except for the nest of bees. Right. So it's basically a, a super siege workshop, basically, where it produces everything your siege workshop can do normally and 50% extra health on your siege engines, which they have a lot of health. So 50% bonus on top of that is quite nice. Yeah. And, and here we see the clock tower nest of bees. Um, this is kind of infamous, I think, after the stress test and the, <laughs> the, the close beta. Um, <laughs> oh, you're killing me. <laughs> but, uh, it, oh, oh my goodness, on the water, we've got a Gallias as well. Okay, I, I think things are about to get, get pretty it's intense heat, it's here. It's heating up, yeah. it's heating up, definitely. Let's talk about the nest of bees. So, it's kind of uh, a replacement for the mangonel. So, it's really good against masses of troops. And we're seeing actually the Pavis here used by the French player. So it's taking yeah. reduced damage from yeah. the Barbican shots. And this is so smart. He's doing this because he wants to tank for his boats. Yeah. Right? Because yeah. his arrows from holds get bonus damage against boats. A lot. Yeah, they hit really hard. They really hit. And he's got 10 units in there. So he's firing 10 arrows plus mm -hmm. the cannon. Mm -hmm. So he's tanking with his Arbletier <laughs> while he repairs his boat with a villager. And then he uses the Gallias, which is a unique French ship, mm -hmm. to actually siege the landmark. Because it does a lot of damage. 120 one... bombard. He doesn't get yeah. a bonus, but it's enough to actually lay into this. And Mike's like, hang on a minute. Yeah, I don't What's know. going on? What, 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 what are you do doing? It. Where do these boats come from? Dude, this is awesome. What, a, what an awesome game. This is so smart by Frank, though. Like, this is really intelligent play. Um, and he's, he's actually going to take this out by the looks of it. Yeah, it looks... So he does have these nested bees, though. Yeah. And nested bees are very good against masses of infantry. So if he can position them correctly... He could really do a number on these arbiters. That's what I'm thinking, right? But they're, they're the really boats, <laughs> the boats are kind of cup, no, like they have a really nice synergy oh, between the two units, right? Shoot, yeah, you're right. Um, I mean, that's that's really a good point because they have such high range. Yeah. They could potentially just snipe the, the nest of bees. Uh -oh, they, oh, 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 he's a dropping a keep. Up. He's dropping a keep. He's got to oh, fight. No. He's got to fight. He has to. He has no choice. Let's see if Look he at can all the use torches, the boats though. to get onto the meadow. Oh, nest of oh. bees on the villagers. <laughs> oh, they're getting wiped out. Oh, oh my goodness. Rob. Oh, is that a demo ship? 
He's actually yeah. bringing yeah. a demo ship. Demo ship. Demo oh, ship. No. Run, oh, run. No. <laughs> oh, oh. His whole army. Oh my goodness. No. I... Wow. Oh, the Bobbican. Is the Bobbican still alive? I think it's, yeah, it's still alive. Yeah, he garrisoned a couple guys in there. He's using the galley to take down the, the clock tower uh, nest of bees here, but she's so thankful they have the extra health. Yeah, yeah, bit yeah. Of extra tankiness. And they're doing really good. They got a nice volley on the arbiters. Oh, did a ton man. of damage. But now the galleasses have moved forward and they're attacking, attacking the nest of bees. Oh, they just finished off the barbican. Wow. This is incredible. I'm loving this. This is awesome. <laughs> um, yeah, and the keep is up as well. He finished the keep, so that, that Look means at the that keep. Mike has it, to go back. It's pretty weak, though. Look at the keep's health. Oh, that's true. Because the uh, the torches were being thrown before before the big explosion, yeah, yeah, right? right? He had a lot of torches. Wow, and, but and he's this putting ram... a Springold emplacement on here. Nice. That's smart. And they really, they really like fighting over the center middle map, right? It's just yeah. such a key strategic location here. And he looked like he was going to move the ram forward and attack it, but the, the galleasses do so much damage, right? They're just going to pierce through the ram. Yeah. Um, you know what? I'm wondering, like, I'm, oh, I'm seeing that. Oh, oh dear. That's uh, a little bit of out of position <laughs> uh -oh. to bring on. Yeah, I'm wondering, um, Frank's got the sacred site in the north. There's a sacred site in the south, and on this map, I believe there's only two sacred sites. Correct. Yeah. I wonder if he's thinking like, what if he like lands across with the transport Ooh. and like fortifies this Sneaky. and goes for a sacred ruin? I mean, it could be, could be an option, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's it's definitely tough because it's on the enemy's side. Yeah. So they can they can attack it a lot easier than you can defend it, but you only need to defend it for 10 minutes with sacred victory and then you just win the game yeah that's it's an option i i've let's see i mean who knows he's actually still taking sheep right now <laughs> uh, but this is kind of critical moment in the game because um you know you got to start making that farm transition you see, he doesn't really have much wood yeah and this is a great time to actually switch the guild hall to wood potentially totally, um, totally. currently it's holding 500 stone so he could be building a lot more keeps this game um, and he's also started to trade, and that's something we've not really um, discussed too much about. Um, but the French have pretty good traders as yeah. well. Uh, they also get to select which resource they want to trade for, which Very is cool. a really nice, like, unique bonus. Um, at the moment, he's trading for gold, but he could Fair switch enough. it to wood or food if he wanted to as well. And you're talking about that farm transition. He has 35 villagers <laughs> on yeah. wood now because he realized the food's out yeah. and my people are hungry. <clears throat> And this is this is really cool. Like we saw, he was trading for the stone. So what what's like sort of his plan here with the stone and the stables and stuff? Yeah. So we mentioned it earlier, but the influence of the French keep is that uh, buildings made around it, specifically the stable and the um, the archery range, um, get reduced cost of units in those buildings. So you can see here it's 25% um, reduction. But he can improve that with the unique tech enlistment incentives to a 35% reduction to cost, Ooh. which is you know kind of the late game scaling for the French. Yeah. Right? Uh, they they strong. get faster villager production in the early game, but that falls off as you reach your your sort of. There's a limit to yeah, that, right? Exactly. And your cheap attacks are nice, but you don't surpass other civs with that. Mm -hmm. This allows mm -hmm. you to get that big late game boost that you need because the French army is quite expensive. Royal knights aren't cheap. Totally. Aren't cheap. Also pretty expensive. Yeah. Yep. So and, and siege isn't cheap either, but uh, doesn't receive the influence. He's got a nice looking army here too, with uh, a good mix. He's, there's some Springolds in there, there's some Manganels along with the, the high Arbletir counter, but <laughs> it could be, that looks like it's gonna be uh, kind of dangerous to fight against this army of Mike with all the Nesta Bees. Yeah, I think that's why he's got the Springolds. I mean, there are a lot of Nest of Bees in here. There's yeah. six, and they're the Clock Tower variants, so, you know, he's gotta be careful. He's got another demo ship poised <laughs> and ready. <laughs> I love that, but he's actually making a switch by the looks of it into cavalry now. Now, this is interesting because, you know, Mike has got a lot of spearmen, but he's placing a lot of stables down here. So I wonder what the, the game plan is. Do you think he's trying to maybe think about raiding, um, holding the choke point and trying to raid and get into the eco? Or is he making a switch to royal knights later on just for the sheer power? Uh, I, I would say both, actually, because it's an excellent raiding unit. Even even one knight will kill a villager in usually three hits. That's true. So you just get one knight in there, and and even, you know, you can spice a couple of knights throughout the enemy's base, and he's got a lot, a lot of hardship to deal with, basically. So 
A, there's that, and B, it's just it's just a powerful unit, right? Just yeah. like having knights, they do a ton of damage, and as long as he can take care of the spearmen, his knights will be able to reign supreme on the battlefield. So I like what's going on here. Mike's uh, deploying the, the clock tower trebuchet, uh, the counterweight. It's um, currently ranging the keep, and Frank's kind of built a dock here to actually <laughs> heal up his Galias passively because boats within the radius of the dock nice, will heal, nice. which is really nice. He's trying to come forward with his spring olds as well and snipe that. Look at that. Three spring olds don't quite take out the nest of bees here. Um, and the spring old is your anti siege siege. I wonder though, as this game goes on, if Frank's thinking about the Imperial Age, Maybe he'll go with the College of Artillery so he can make Culverin, yeah, which could be interesting. Yeah, help give him the extra range and advantage. Yeah. Definitely needs it against all these uh, clock tower spring holes. Yeah, and this is really getting and he locked hasn't, down here. And he hasn't lost any of them. Look, he's just repairing it up with the villagers and the extra health is just, he's able to take some hits and keep surviving and keep growing his army. Look at this. Uh, Mike is really expanding his economy in the back here. He's got, uh, well, they're farms, but they're actually growing rice um, oh, when you're playing as beautiful. the Chinese. Yeah, is, I really yeah. like the visual update on that. It's so cool. And uh, yeah, he's kind of expanding that eco. It doesn't look like he's actually in a dynasty right now. Um, he's kind of maybe waiting for Ming, um, but at the moment, he's just really focusing on building up his siege um, and making the most of that. There's an interesting this. fight here. The Galias against the... Oh, those cannons are doing... Oh, no, look, the torches. Oh, torches run away, run away. Paddle, paddle quick. Oh, <laughs> oh, oh. Oh, and more demos are coming in. Oh, I think Mike sees, learned his he lesson. Sees, he's yeah. like, oh, not again, not again. I'm not doing that. Not falling for that one. Yeah, he focus fired those with the Springles immediately. Yeah. <laughs> and now the Springles are interesting because um, they actually have some damage, right, against against boats as well. Yeah, yeah. Um, they really do chunk away at them. And oh my goodness, another demo ship. <laughs> oh no, he blew, he blew up a few troops, but pretty good overall. Yeah. Galias he's, actually he's really trying to, to kill those springles, right? That's yeah. a lot of torches. Uh, <laughs> they both <laughs> ran away. <laughs> it was like, let's let's not fight anymore. Let's just be friends. <laughs> Who's winning out here, though? I mean, it, it's going to be so uh -oh, hard to uh -oh, push into the, the nest bees. of bees. Oh, oh God. Oh. <laughs> That's oh, so brutal. painful. That's so painful. That's a lot of dead arbiters. Oh. But what I love and about this. And the keep. This, oh, the keep goes down. You're right. And what i got to say, what I love about this is is just that these trebuchets really force this. Mm -hmm. Right? They really used the range of the trebuchet to force this. Frank had to go to Mike yep. here. Yep. Um, and now he's on the back foot here after taking pretty heavy losses as he pushed in. Mm hmm Yeah, that was that was painful. He lost both both the boats, right? He's got no more naval there. They were doing a really good job of holding down that choke point as well. Like they, they hit really hard, they do a lot of damage. <laughs> <laughs> Mike just like, yep, that's a pretty good spot uh, for a keep. I'm gonna claim this land actually for my own. <laughs> I'm taking this is, over. This is brilliant. I'm loving this. And, and he's, like I say, gonna build that keep so much faster as well. Yeah. He's also made a switch into some archers, which, um, you know, I, I don't know how I feel about that. Um, against the Arbolatria, they're not as good because the Pavis obviously gives them the, the ranged armor. Yeah, but, yeah, totally. Um, yeah, and, then, and then he's seen, he knows he's playing against French that there's going to be cavalry, right? Yeah. So archers do not do well against cavalry. So no, absolutely kind not. of an interesting decision on the archers, but it does, they were sort of playing like a ranged game yeah, where no one really true. wanted to engage with melee troops. So just having some extra range damage is always good. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, on the other side, we see Mike actually throwing down a lot of stables now. He's actually going into um, horsemen and doing the veteran tech. So I think the plan for Mike will be to maybe hold the choke point and do some raiding, as we spoke about earlier. Totally. I thought it might be Frank doing the raiding, <laughs> but uh, it looks like it's going to be Mike here as he drops down another key. And uh, he's doing boiling oil, so anything that runs past these, these will be uh, taking a lot of damage from the oil as uh, Frank actually reaches the Imperial Age. Um, which landmark did he go up with? Mm, I'm just trying question. to find it Ooh, right he's now. He's got four relics. Oh, wow, that's really nice. Well done. Fantastic. Where's his uh, age four landmark? There it is, it's the College of Artillery. Yeah, that's we were just talking it. about that. Um, this is awesome. So this is one of the, um, obviously one of the two landmarks, but uh, it allows him to make the royal cannons, the royal revolticans, the oh, royal culverins. And what does royal mean? Well, if you're the French, you get a lot of royal stuff. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the College of Artillery, though, um, allows them to make all the siege immediately upon nice. reaching the Imperial Age, but nice. it gives them 20% more damage. Um, and, of course, it gives them access to the culverin, Ooh. which is an extremely long-range 
um, very effective anti-siege siege. Mm -hmm. It's a bit better than the Springald. Uh, by hit, by a hits, bit better, I mean a lot better. Hard. <laughs> Plus 204 versus siege. Yeah. I mean, that's exactly what you need against the uh, the clock tower siege, though, right? Yeah. It has 50% more health, yeah. so it's the perfect answer. But this is scary. This is really scary. Mike has Triple three heaved. He's got a ton of siege back here. He's got the Trebs, trebs in the back. Wailing. Frank's feeling probably pretty feeling on edge constricted. right now. Yeah, yeah. This, is, this is a tough situation, definitely. With the Corvrins, though, I wonder if the Corvrins will, will be able to push this back. Um, and it, if not just the Corvrins, but also the, um, the bomb. The demo ship! Is it gonna <laughs> blow up? Is it gonna blow up? Is it gonna he's get not, killed? I don't think he's noticed. No, I don't think so. What either. if Mike actually um, torches this by mistake? <laughs> and, and then and it then blows kills up it? and kills he's all the units. He's hitting it, he's hitting it. Is that gonna happen? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's, it, he kind of doesn't want the repair from no! the dog. There we go. <laughs> oh man, I love it. Those okay. demo ships are so good. We got veteran horsemen out. I mean, Frank's losing military production buildings. Though, a lot. Right? He like, lost a second keep. He's gonna have to rebuild these somewhere. This is yeah. This cause, cause like you're saying, right? With the influence area, he's gonna have to pay more for his troops if he doesn't have that. You know, he's losing all these keeps around here. Yeah, totally. And and he's actually got very few military production buildings. He's trying to rebuild. Yeah, them look, in he's the back. rebuilding them not next yeah. to a keep, right? That's a lot of lost resources. But I have to say, he's an age ahead of Mike, so he's able to do the elite tech now. Mm -hmm. He's actually using the, the monks to heal up his uh, horsemen. They as already well. got all the relics, yeah. so put them to work, right? And and this could be really good for him because he could actually try and get in here and kill these archers, which you know horsemen are really effective at. Um, and he's got the culverins, which is great to to stall and slow Mike down. Mm -hmm. And in the south. He is actually capturing oh, the sacred site. Oh, nice. And he's got a keep there, yeah. so it's defended. Yeah, he built the monastery just so he didn't have to worry about transporting over. Nice. So this is really awesome right now as he comes in. Deploy the Pavis, man. <laughs> Do <laughs> it. down. So this, he's got the uh, he's got the culverins fighting the spring olds. But there's, look how many there's spring olds. So many spring Look how many spring olds. Oh he's got to back up. He's got to repair. Wow, he's got like, uh, what's it, what is that, like eight or nine Springles That was there? a lot of Springles. Yes, but look at the uh, damage from the horsemen. They actually wiped the archers there. Yeah, and they killed some of the nest of bees too, I think, right? There's only two bees left there. Yeah, and, and Frank now kind of microing back with his culverin using yep. the extended range. Yep, Culver's And he's actually starting good. to pick off oh, the Springles Oh, there goes another well. one. Yep. I mean, this is going to be hard for, for Frank to push into normally. Yeah, he did lose. He had a cannon. Right? Yeah. He had a cannon up there, and that got killed. But that's all he needs to do now, right? Make the oh, cannon. Oh, look, look, he's picking off more. He killed another nest of bees that walked forward too far, and the Springles got it. Or, sorry, the Culverins. Yeah, I mean, this this is actually going to be a really good hold for Frank, I think. I mean, how does Mike push into the Culverin right now? I think he needs to... Get in there well, with some cab or that, something. Yeah, yeah. That, that's a perfect answer, actually. We scrolled north yeah. there it was. And, and we say cab, I mean, this isn't just any cavalry. This is Fire Lancer. Yeah. He's actually gone for the dynasty. Nice, okay. So that means, yep, he's built the Imperial Palace. So that's the second landmark in the castle age. And Imperial Palace is pretty cool for a couple reasons. It has a huge line of sight, and it also has this ability you can activate that lets you see all of the enemy villagers. Look at that. He can see all the yeah, way across you know, the river. Yeah, with that he can thing. see what's yeah. going on. Very nice. You can see the enemy docks, right? Yeah. And yeah, with Imperial Spies, you activate it, and then for a couple seconds, it reveals all of the enemy villagers for you. So you know exactly where to go to raid, you know what they're up to, and what they're trying to produce, and stuff like that. So yeah, it's a yeah. really cool landmark. And he's got Fire Lancers as well, which is the light cavalry uh, one of the new units for the Chinese. Yeah, and the cool thing, whoa, he just pasted that cannon. Whoa. I mean, fire, it's in the name, Ooh, right? There, it's in yeah, the name. there's fire, yeah, fire, like, of course. Oh, oh is I'm he going more. for the culverins? He's just going to snipe them out. Oh, like, they can't run away. There's nothing they can do. Oh, he's going for the last one. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. So, the Fire Lancer's special thing is having really strong torches, which means that they kill buildings quickly, and also they use their torches on siege weapons, as everything does in this game, so they kill the siege weapons very quickly. So that was a devastating blow, because those culverins were killing a lot of units, and you can see this little fiery explosion when they attack as well. So they have a charge attack that does an AoE, 
Well, it's actually, I mean, the Fire Lance is a real weapon from history, right? Like, this, yeah. you can see it here. It's actually got, like, a firework attached to the end <laughs> that, so like, cool. propels it forward. <laughs> um, it's, it's awesome. Uh, and they're really, yeah, they make a really big, like, charge impact, but they don't have a lot of, like, staying power. Yeah, they, they have, like, quite, less hit points yeah. than normal cavalry, so they're weaker in that way, but when you get them in the right position on siege weapons, they paste. Yeah. I'm wondering what's happening down here. How has Frank not captured this? Do you think this villager was a, a monk? I thought it was! Like, I thought it was! <laughs> it's disguised! <laughs> I thought he captured this earlier, but I, I guess no, not. No, that was just that's the villager yeah. that's been there the whole time. <laughs> And now Mike's pushing in. I, I, I wonder, you know, maybe Frank's big mistake sit here is Fire actually... Fire Lancers! Oh, look at that. Yeah, look how much damage they took. Oh, those Fire Lancers doing so good. And now he's got also the fire from the, the keep attacking these wounded he's horsemen. Red Balticon out. Oh, the Fire Lancers, no. I mean, the Rebaldican, not really the best unit for the job here. Um, certainly better against infantry um, mm -hmm. than Cav. But uh, yeah, if Frank can just like defend his Culverin, I mean that's the big if. I don't know if he can at this rate. He's he wasn't ready forward. for the Fire Lancer. Yeah. Like he needed he needed to have spearmen to deal with them really. It was a great switch from, yeah. from Mike. Yeah, really good very switch. Cool. Um, and I wonder if Frank's mistake, I was going to say this before, it's like, he didn't capture this. He never put the pressure on Mike to respond to this. Yeah, yeah. And now Mike's really made some great progress in towards Frank's base, and he's starting to lose his landmarks now. This could actually just be a landmark victory. He's losing his town center, yeah, his college yeah. of artillery is here, and he's doing all this over he's, He never repaired that, <laughs> that school of cavalry from the beginning of the game, because it costs a lot of wood to repair it, right? Yeah. It's not cheap, so he just decided to do other things instead. Yeah, um, yeah. actually, the um, the landmarks, they do cost wood to repair, so if you want to repair them all four, like all three, it's, it's going to cost you a lot. Frank yeah. doesn't have a lot. Yeah. And we saw, we saw earlier, right, he was trying to build farms, so he had no wood, so he, I think he's just kind of been uh, pretty short on wood, and also making all the siege equipment is very wood intensive, right? Yes. And now he's getting raided in the north, he's lost his gold access there, although, oh. I mean... No, not really, not a problem really a problem right problem. now. <laughs> but well, losing the villages is a problem, yeah. and, uh, you know, getting thrown into disarray is a problem as well. <laughs> <laughs> Being in chaos yes. is a slight problem, actually. <laughs> what uh, what's his guild hall at right now? I'm wondering. It's uh, it's on food, actually, I, and that's that's fair. I mean, he has got a lot of food um, gatherers, but he's hurting for food right now. He's trying to spend it on on the royal knights. He doesn't have the elite upgrade at the moment. Um, it could be in queue somewhere, but it doesn't look like it. Yeah, he doesn't really have the, yeah. the food for it. And uh oh. He just lost his town center oh, landmark no. as well, so he's got one, two, three dead landmarks here, and the traps should just stop focusing uh -oh. on the guild hall. Oh look, he's going now. with the fire lancers. They're all they're all running right for it. He knows. That's huge. He's going for the throat, and he. What are you gonna stop him with, right? He's got nothing. Horsemen, horsemen nothing are left. like a like a raiding unit, right? They're not gonna kill him very quickly. And that's it. Down it goes. GG. Good game. Wow. That was fantastic. I love how creative yeah. the, they, they were with this game, fighting over the middle. Like, uh -huh, uh -huh. Obviously the most hotly contested area of the map, but the way that they approached that, using the ships, using the nest of bees, ranging with the trebs, putting the landmarks there, yeah. that was awesome. Oh my gosh, that was a really fun, cool match. I'm glad we got this Mongolian Heights map, <laughs> yeah. and also a lot of sheep is another <laughs> standout feature. So yeah, very fun map, lots of cool stuff going on. Epic match. Epic match. <laughs> All right. Well, thanks for watching, everyone. Uh, we'll have the Q&A right after this. And if you're watching on YouTube, stay tuned. We've got another one coming up next week. Right on. Bye, guys. Bye-bye.